In this video, we are going to look at an implementation of a simple design, namely the fast Fourier transform using Vivado high level synthesis tools. The steps that we will follow will be first generate reference data that will be used for testing, write C code and simulate using Vivado HLS, synthesize, simulate post synthesis, and then finally package the IP for export and use in the Vivado tools for implementation. We will not be covering certain topics in this video, in particular optimization of bit widths and data representations and optimization of the design in any sense for size, speed or any other metric. There are a couple of useful reference websites over here. One of them is the source code of this entire demonstration. All the source code used for this demonstration is available at the website gitlab.com slash chandrachudan slash teach FPGA. The website itself is called demos with FPGAs. The example that we will be using is FFT using HLS. You are free to clone the information from this website and modify it as you see fit. Experimentation is the best way that you can learn. In addition to this, we will also be using the numeric Python libraries in particular, the Anaconda distribution, which you can get from anaconda.com slash distribution. This includes numeric Python, scientific Python, and various other libraries that are useful for data analysis as well as signal processing. Installation and using these tools is beyond the scope of this video. If you are more familiar with other languages such as MATLAB, feel free to use them instead. You will have to adapt some of the scripts to get them to work appropriately. So the idea of this demo video is more to show you the principles involved rather than to say that this is specifically the only way to work. Please note that this entire demonstration is done on a Linux system and following the instructions given over here would be easiest if you have a similarly set up Linux system. However, the principles involved are general and even if you have a Windows system or a different distribution of Linux, you should not really find it too hard to modify the instructions appropriately. We will start by creating a clone of the website that contains all the source code data. Once you have a copy of the data, you can cd into the appropriate directory and the folder corresponding to the FFT example. There are three subfolders over here, namely scripts, VHLS, which is the Vivado HLS source code, and Vivado, which will be used for the FPGA implementation later. To keep things clean, we will create a temporary build directory and store all our synthesis projects inside that folder. The first thing we need to do is to generate the data to be used for testing. I will first open up the script corresponding to that. It is in the scripts folder and is called data gen underscore FFT dot PY. It's a Python script. It uses a numeric Python library and defines a few functions that help us to output data. Without going into the details of exactly how the different functions work, all that you need to understand at the moment is it generates random input data starting from a known seed for repeatability. The data is generated as random complex values and FFT is computed and the input as well as the generated output are stored into two files in floating point format. The same data and the result are also stored in hex format into two other files. These will be used later for the Vivado testing on hardware. We can run the script as follows and you will notice that four files have been created over here. Input cpp.txt and output cpp.txt contain the floating point data that will be read by the C program or Vivado HLS test bench and in hex.mem and out hex.mem have the same data but now stored after conversion to 16 bit fixed point in hexadecimal format. The next step is to start Vivado HLS and generate a project. 
we will create a new project where we give it any name that is suitable for example f5032 the main source code will be added from the vhls folder and its fft.cpp the top function over here is fft next we add the test bench which is fft underscore tb dot cpp but in addition to this we also need to generate the two dot text files inp underscore cpp dot text and out underscore cpp dot text that was just generated by running the data underscore gen script the part number needs to be selected appropriately so that we can later on implement it on fpga the simplest way to do this is to directly type the part number corresponding to the basis 3 FPGA board over here. It is XC7A35TCPG and the part number is 236 corresponding to a 236 pin package dash 1 for a minus 1 speed grade. Once the project has been created, you can look at the source code which is the fft.cpp file that we had just added and the test bench the test bench itself is fairly straightforward it basically reads in the inp cpp and out cpp dot text files the inp cpp is used in order to generate the input data array which we then feed into the fft function and the out underscore cpp dot text file is used in order to generate another array called exp underscore out which is the expected output data so that finally we can then go over the computed data that is data underscore out and the expected data which is exp underscore out calculate the difference between them the l2 norm of that and as long as that value is less than a certain tolerance limit we will say that it is error free. The reason for applying this tolerance is that since we are converting from floating point which was used in Python to fixed point which is being used for Vivado HLS, there could in fact be some small errors and we don't want to, the system to show an error uh, for that. The tolerance that is set over here is 0 0.01. You can play around with this value. You may also notice that there is a for loop out here and the entire process is repeated twice. The reason for this will become clear later when we discuss the post synthesis RTL co simulation. The first step after having written the source code is to run a C simulation. You can click on the button there so that says run C simulation. And once we select OK, it goes ahead, start launches a compiler and runs the simulation. It is important that you see this message pass. This was printed out by the test bench and the information message CSIM done with zero errors is printed out later by Vivado HLS C simulation itself. The test bench has been written in such a way that if there were any errors, it would have indicated a message fail and would also have returned a value which is not equal to zero. Now that we are comfortable that the C simulation passes and has and is doing the correct thing, we can run C synthesis. After a short while, the synthesis report for the FFT function pops up. We can see that the target clock period that we had set was 10 nanoseconds and the system was actually able to achieve an estimated 7.3 nanoseconds. The latency and initiation interval are 833 clock cycles. Keep in mind that we have not applied any optimizations, so this number is not surprising. The resource usage, once again, we have not applied any kinds of optimizations, so there is nothing specific to expect out here. The only other thing of interest is the interface itself. The signals that the module has are one is the clock and then the reset and a start signal which is used to start the module operation. As outputs, it generates a done signal it also indicates when it is idle and when it is ready to accept new inputs. The data in and data out signals have been declared as axis stream in the FFT code out here. And as a result of that, 
both of them show up as access streams which have the data, a valid signal to indicate when the input is valid and a ready signal that is given out by the module over here to indicate when it is ready to accept new data. This is on the input side. Conversely, on the output side, the module generates a valid signal when it has valid data generated at the output and takes in a ready signal from the next stage, which it can then feed into. The reason why the data is showing up as 32 bits is because we have also applied a data pack directive which takes the complex values and packs them into single 32-bit values, combining the real and imaginary parts together. Once we are satisfied with the synthesis results, we can click on Run CRTL co-simulation. This brings up a Verilog simulator, Verilog or VHDL. Since both of them have been generated by the tool itself, we don't really have a specific choice of one over the other. The only thing of interest is that we can change the dump trace to all so that we can see internal signals and click on OK. The RTL core simulation takes a little longer than the C simulation, but at the end of it, you should once again see the message pass, which indicates that exactly the same result as the C simulation has been obtained. You'll also notice up here, the co-simulation report says that the Verilog status is passed and that the latency is 833 clock cycles and the initiation interval was 834. This is actually measured from the implementation. You can open the waveform viewer in order to actually see the results. The waveform viewer shows you all the data from the simulation in a Vivado environment. But once again, this is only a simulation. The important thing as far as we are concerned is the design top signals. You can look at the C outputs, in particular, all the signals corresponding to data out, the C inputs, all the signals corresponding to data in, and the block level handshaking signals. A few things to observe in this waveform. One of them is the fact that since we ran the simulation twice in the test bench, you have two sections over here where input is being read from uh, the data here as well as around the 8 microsecond mark. What you can also, during those times the data valid is considered to be 1, that is to say the data is actually being read into the FFT module. The, on the output side, we have two segments once again where output is generated. The data valid is 1 in short intervals and at each time that the data value becomes equal to 1, we find that there is a corresponding value of the output. This once again happens two times corresponding to the, the fact that the for loop ran twice. The start signal goes high at the 135 nanosecond mark and the corresponding done signal goes high at the 8.465 microsecond mark. This difference in clock cycles is used to compute the latency. Similarly, the time between the done signal corresponding to the first input sequence which is at 8.465 microseconds and the second input sequence which ended at 16.805 microseconds. That difference gives us the initiation interval or the time between successive samples. Once we are satisfied with the waveform, we can close this, go back to Vivado HLS and now we can export the RTL as a package that can then be imported into Vivado for implementation on an FPG. There are a number of configuration options that can be specified over here, but we will just skip all of these and accept the default values. Once again, we will not be evaluating the generated RTL. That just gives us more detailed information on timing, which could be useful in certain circumstances. But for this simple example, we are going to skip this. At the end, you should see the message finished export RTL, which indicates that the RTL export completed successfully. This brings us to the end of this video, where we discussed how we can generate the sample data that can be used for testing a Vivado HLS design, write the C code and a test bench, simulate, synthesize, co-simulate, and export the corresponding IP.